For a lot of people, mixing drums is a huge pain. And with so many different plugins that we can use, sometimes it can feel overwhelming. So in today's video, I'm gonna get rid of all that nonsense and show you how to mix drums from start to finish using just one single plugin. Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Bobby Bailo, and I'm the mixing and mastering engineer at Rayton Productions. And this channel is dedicated to helping you make better sounding music without needing to spend a ton of money on expensive gear or unnecessary plugins. If you're new here, thank you so much for spending your time with me today. As a thank you, I have a special gift for you. In the description, I have a link to download a guide that contains all of my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins. And this guide is comprehensive. It has every single kind of plugin you could possibly want. Talking compressors, limiters, clippers, EQs, saturators, distortion. I even have a section on free samples. So if any of this sounds interesting to you or you're just looking for some inspiration, definitely go and check that out. Again, that is totally free. So here's the session we have today. It's a song by a band called Every Hour Kills. And you can actually go and purchase this session which has way more tracks and MIDI and all sorts of stuff if you want to dive in deeper and see what a really modern rock metal production looks like. This is all produced by my good buddy Alan Laskow. So if you're interested in the music or the band or you just want to get your hands on these tracks, definitely go and look in the description. I have a link to all of that stuff in there. So let me just give you a quick sample of what we're working with. Um, I have everything is mixed except for the drums, which are all raw. It's going to be super quiet. I'm just going to play you what we have. Okay, so I'm just going to turn these drums up so you can hear them. We'll just go through each track one by one. So here's the kick drum. See here, it's super clean, right? So we know these drums are programmed. Okay, so there's gonna be a lot of separation in these tracks, but that's okay. Everything I show you in this video, you'll be able to apply to a real drum kit as well. Let's listen to just the snare. Hear a lot of ghost notes. How about the toms? Sound like some massive toms. Cool. Not too many toms. That's okay. <laughs> uh, let's listen to hi-hats. What do we have? So just super basic hi-hats, right? Okay. Uh, drum cymbals. So these, these are a bunch of crashes and things, and these were all put on a single track. Okay. Sounds like your typical... Program drums. Let's listen to these overheads. Yep, and then the drum rooms. And if you don't know this, the drum rooms are where all the magic is in drums. So if you don't use drum rooms, you need to start. I have plenty of videos on my channel about how to mix room mics with drums because it's a little bit tricky and counterintuitive but uh, definitely spend some time checking that out. If I remember, I'll put a card somewhere up here. So I haven't done anything to these drums at all, so let's just get them routed. So the basic flow that I do when I'm working with drums is uh, I, have a, I have a bunch of different group tracks. I've made a drum all, a drum crush bus, which is just a, basically a parallel compression bus. I'll show you how to set that up in a second. I have a shells bus, which just has all of the actual non-symbol elements of a drum kit, right? So the snare, kick, and toms will all go to here. And then uh, all the symbols go to the drum symbol bus, right? So that's gonna be our hi-hats, those crashes, and then the overheads. And then I have a drum room bus, which I like to do some crazy stuff to, but you'll see that in a second. So let's just quickly route everything. So all these tracks we're gonna put to their respective buses. So let's just do this really quickly. So we're gonna send all these Symbols to the symbol bus, shells to the shell bus, and now we take these groups. So we have this uh, drum room, drum symbol, 
drum shell bus. These will all be routed now to the drum all, okay? Including this drum crush bus. Let's put that to drum all, okay? So now everything feeds this drum all bus. So that way, if we want to export stems later, we can just export this one channel and we have just the drums totally mixed by themselves. Um, and then you also have the ability to go in and then export each one of these different elements if you need it down the road. And this also makes mixing, adjusting, and balancing levels really easy because you can just come in and then uh, turn the volume up and down if you need a little bit louder drums. So at this point, I told you that we're going to mix the drums using just one plugin. That one plugin is going to be a channel strip by Waves called EV2. It's their latest emulation of the E channel SSL board. Sounds pretty cool. It has distortion, it has all these cool features. Let me just show you what it looks like. And it usually is on sale for like 29 bucks. Um, it's, it's pretty impressive. So I've done a review on this plugin. So if you're interested in finding out all the nuances of this plugin and I show you curves and all sorts of stuff, I have a video on that as well. If you don't care about that, let's just keep rolling with this. So let me show you how I would mix a kick drum using this channel strip. Okay. So let's just uh, let's just solo the kick drum and see what we have to work with. Now, before I get started, I will say one thing. Okay. Make special note of how all this stuff sounds because getting really good original tones is huge to getting a really good, complete, final mix sound. Okay, if we start with a bunch of crappy sounding drums, it's gonna, not, it's gonna take a lot more work and the end product is not gonna be that great, okay? So if, if you wanna just hear what decent metal drums or rock drums sound like, just rewind back to the beginning where I played all these tracks individually so you can get a sense for like what a good sound is that's gonna hold up in a mix, okay? So that being said, let's let's bring out the best qualities of all these different instruments now, okay? Okay, so here's the kick drum we have. It sounds pretty good. It's got a nice low energy to it. It's got this nice uh, mid-range like whack to it. I think we need a little bit more top end though because we're gonna be competing in a really dense mix, right? Listen to what we have to have our drums cut through. Right, there's a lot. Okay, so let's get this uh, kick drum and let's let's start giving it a little bit of air. Okay. So the one thing I really like about this plugin is these like basic presets that SSL came up with sound awesome for drums. Like this AK is amazing for adding a little bit of that air and space to like a kick drum or a snare drum and even toms. Let's just leave it like that. Like, so about 3 dB gives it a nice top end to it. Um, if we add too much air, what's going to happen is it's going to start fighting the vocals. So if we put the vocals in I hid and we start turning this up, it sounds like the kick drum is now in front of the vocals, right? So we got to back this off. We want to make sure the drums are a little bit behind the vocalist. Okay, so like right around here, this is a good spot where now the kick drum is more present, more airy, but it's not getting in the way of the vocals because the vocals are what really drives this song. Let's try to give it a little bit more low energy. I'm a fan of like a really punchy, deep kick drum. So uh, I'm just going to add, make this a bell shape and then give it a little bit of boost, maybe around 60 to 80 hertz. Now, the kick drum is not super fast in this song, so we can get away with a little bit deeper kick drum sound. Okay, let's bypass. Yeah, 
There we go. I was starting to just kind of thicken it up a little bit more. Um, another cool thing we can try to do is maybe give it a little bit like 400 hertz. Now, this doesn't always work, but sometimes it adds this nice power to like a small speaker system, like in a car or on a cell phone that really helps it cut. So let's try that. I'm going to make this a little bit tighter of a, a cue here. And we can use this button right here to find exactly the right frequency we want so it doesn't sound boxy. Okay. So actually, like right here, it, that's like uh, this is about the right frequency where you're gonna get a nice like punch on a smaller speaker. But you, but you put too much of this and it turns it into a basketball, right? So we have to find the right balance. So some people like the really scooped sound. So you know, minus 9 dB here. So I think just a tiny bit more is all we really need. And if you saw what I was doing, I go really far back in one direction and then really far in another. And that's just to help you gain perspective of the sound. If you just turn the knob a tiny bit, you're gonna, it's gonna be hard for you to make a really good decision if you're making the right move or not, okay? And we really should bring some of these other elements into the mix so we can get a sense for how this is holding up. So. The instruments that this kick drum is going to fight probably the most with is going to be the bass and probably the guitar. So let's bring all those in. Sounds pretty good. Um, we can try adding a little compression, but we might not need it. Okay, so let's put the ratio at like maybe three or four to one is a nice level for kick drum. And then this yellow button, or these yellow lights down here tell us how much re gain reduction we're doing. So that's, that's a lot. To make this a little faster attack, it makes it a little bit more aggressive. Cool, this is starting to all come together. Um, at this point, I don't want to mess with it too much more. It sounds about right. Uh, so let's just move on. Let's go to this snare drum. Let's see what we can do with this. All right. So you can... Put a high pass filter if you want. If this was a real drum kit, I would recommend doing this because there's probably gonna be some kick drum bleed in that snare mic. Uh, so you're gonna wanna filter off some of those sub frequencies from your snare just to kind of clean it up. But since we have no kick drum bleed, right? This is These are programmed drums. We don't need to worry about that. This is just, if you cut that, it's just an unnecessary step. There's really not a lot of really bass frequencies in this drum. Crack, so let's not worry about it. So let's give it a little bit more snap, and I want a little bit more aggression out of the snare. Okay, right? This is a big metal song, right? So let's let's uh, start by doing some compression and to bring out some of that top end sizzle and snap. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do about four to one and bite into it and see what it sounds like. When you're trying to figure out the compression. Feel free to really be aggressive with it so you can hear what the compressor is actually doing. If you just come in here and do like a dB or two, it's hard to really hear what the actual sound is happening to the snare drum. So go in and just smash it down so you, and then set all of your settings and then back it way off and then just, you know, do a few dB then. So now you can really hear how that release is changing, right? If you have fast attack, we lose all of the body and punch of the snare. So you do not want to do that. I keep this off. 
Cool. So this, I, I like how it's feeling right about here. I'm just going to back off on this compression a little bit, okay? Alright, I still feel like we need some more snap, because if we bring in... Let's bring in um, those guitars again, because they're going to be pretty rowdy. And let's bring in the synth. There's a lot going on with the synth, too. Right? We, we need this snare to compete with that. So let's, let's uh, put this little speaker icon so we can hear what frequency we're adjusting. Uh, let's just solo the snare. So like right here just sounds like the snares, right? And when we get down to like 6K, it, it has this weird like metallic-y sound. But it's almost like harsh, right? It, it's definitely the snares, but so let's stick to about 8K and up. And I'm just gonna raise, raise the entire top end of this. Cool. All right, let's add a little bit more power to this snare. Biggest favorite trick I love to do, around 200 hertz, just boost that until it adds this like weight to the snare drum. Let's listen. So it's, let me see. So I'm gonna go just below 200 hertz. Let's boost this up so we can really hear what it's doing. So there's something I'm noticing in this snare drum. Um, I like where this is sitting in terms of the power, but there's this ring. Have you heard, did you hear that? There's this like really almost kind of annoying ring that's going on. And it was just above 200 hertz. So let's try to take care of that. So uh, this is where this is really going to be helpful, this speaker. Let's make this really sharp cue so that we can be more surgical with, with uh, trying to find that ring so that we can remove it. And because we have this selected, we'll, we'll be able to like hone in on exactly where that ringing frequency is. It's like right there, okay? So let's cut the, that frequency back a little bit. Okay, so I think this helps, but I mean, this is obviously way, way, way too much, right? We're losing all the power of the snare. So if we boost this, we should listen. It should sound like we're enhancing that ring, right? All right, right there. So that's where we're going to cut it. And then we're going to offset it by boosting a little bit more 200. Cool. All right, let's bring in uh, the, the bass and guitars again in the sense, and just make sure that this snare drum is still cutting. Cool, let's go to the chorus. Still wanting a little bit more top end snap. We might get some of that out of the overhead track or the rooms, but let's, let's just try to squeeze out a little bit more sizzle so it really punches. Yeah. Cool, that snare sounding good. Let's bring the kick in with it. So we're driving this compressor way too hard. It's the the level is too high. So I'm just gonna dial this back. Because we were distorting the kick drum. So I'm just gonna offset this by the same amount. Much better. Cool. 
So that sounds like a good foundation to this mix, right? Um, let's do the toms quickly. Toms, I have a cool trick I can't wait to show you. All right, so let's go just loop a section where the toms are playing so we can really hear what we're doing. Okay, right here. Okay, again, I'm just going to lower this down. So let's start by just compressing it a little bit. We want to just control a little bit of those toms. Cool. That's going to give us a little bit more of the body or the tone of the tom. Sounds pretty awesome to me. Now, I feel like the toms are ringing too long. So what we can do is actually set up um, an ex we can set this expander up. And what that's going to do is it's going to let some of the the initial rumble of the tom come in, and then it's going to act like a gate and turn the volume down once it drops below whatever threshold we set here. So to give you an idea, let's turn this range all the way up to 40, and I'll just show you what it does, okay? As long as it exceeds the threshold, you're going to hear the sound, right? And then, see these green lights just zooming in? That means that it's doing 20 decibels of volume reduction, okay? And those lights come on only after the sounds go away, right? So it's just like a gate, okay? But we can define the range of the gate. So instead of going to complete silence, we'll just have it turn it down like 20 or 30 decibels, okay? So now we just adjust this threshold to find the spot where when the toms are starting to like ring too long, that this, this uh, expander is going to kick in and then turn that down for us. Cool, like that. Now you notice it kind of cuts it out really fast. We can adjust how long it takes to, to remove that ring by changing the um, release knob here. Okay. So we're just going to make this a little bit longer. We're going to put it to like about one, which I think is one second. There you go. So after a second, it returns it back to normal. Okay. So let's uh, just add a little bit more top end to give it a little bit of sense of air. And I think we're probably good. We might carve out some of those mids too. Let's see. Cool. That's sounding pretty good. Uh, let's go put on our little speaker icon and then find a good spot where there's maybe some mids we want to cut. Usually with rock and metal, you want to cut out around 400 to 800 hertz in the toms. That stuff always gets in the way of the vocals and it makes a mix feel really muddy. Let's actually, let's open it up. Yeah, like this stuff is, we don't necessarily want that. Let's, so let's see what it sounds like when we get rid of it. Now what's going to be really important is having everything else in context of the song. Because if you just, you really don't know what you're doing to the tom tone if it's just by itself. So we have to bring in all these other instruments. Otherwise, we're not going to know if we're making the right decision. Okay, So let's unmute all this stuff, bring everything in. And let's listen to what our arms um, and uh, kick and snare sound like together. So now the toms kind of sound a little bit too scooped, in my opinion. So let's back off on this top end. And yeah, we, we actually do want those mids, right? So that was a mistake on my part. I should have had everything in context because it was very obvious once we had all the other instruments in. And these are also still a little loud, so let's bring that down. Cool. And some of those mids will also fill out when we bring in the rooms and the overheads. So we'll see how it all pans out later. So this is what we have so far. Sounds pretty good, right? Very aggressive, doesn't sound too compressed. I'm, I'm digging it. So let's, uh, let's get going on these hi-hats. So let's just hear what they sound like. Okay, they're already panned for us a little bit. 
Um, they don't sound like they're hard pan. It's kind of like maybe 40% over. Maybe 50 or 60, actually. So let's bring them over a touch more. Let's add the channel strip, EV2. And let's see what we could do to make these hi-hats fit in a little bit nicer with the drum kit. Actually going to do, before I mix the hi-hats, is I'm going to go right to the overheads. Let's get the overhead sound situated. And then what we can do is just fade up the volume fader on the hi-hats to see if something's missing. Okay? And then we'll know exactly how we should EQ or compress or whatever we need to do to those hi-hat tracks. Okay, So let's just start with the overheads. Changed my mind, sorry. Cool. Sounds pretty good. I might do a little bit of light compression just to try to bring out a little bit more sense of space. So let's keep it like 1.7. Just kind of bite into it and see if, see if we like it. And I'm gonna make this release pretty fast because if you have a really short release, it makes the drums feel more exciting and aggressive sounding. Okay. If you have a really long release, it sounds smoother and more vibey. This is definitely like an aggressive song, so let's keep it fast. Cool. So you hear it's just kind of helping to glue the kit together a little bit more. Um, let's also add a little distortion to it. Why not, right? We, can, we have the ability to do that by just turning this knob, so let's try that. So let's bypass this now and see if we like what we're doing. Got to make sure it's level matched. Yeah, it just has like, it's just a lot more cohesiveness, I think, from a little bit of this compression, a little bit of this, this distortion from uh, this channel strip. What I'm noticing by doing the compression and adding this is they're starting to get a little bit of muddiness. And it's in like the low mids of the cymbals. Let me try to find it using this uh, EQ so I can show you. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this down. It's right there. That is exactly what I'm hearing, that call, that call sound. <laughs> this garbage. That needs to get out of there, okay? Let's dig some of that out. That's too much. Yeah, just a few dB, it doesn't need much. If you dig out too much of the 600, listen to what happens to the kick and the snare drum, right? We lose some of this mid-range punch, right? And if you have too much of it in there, the cymbals sound like just really muddy and it, and it, clear, it just makes everything blurry. So yeah, just like 3 dB is all we really need for this. And I honestly don't think we need to add much top end. Maybe a little bit? It honestly sounds pretty aggressive to me, so. We can try a little bit, but I, I have a feeling this is a mistake. We can always come back and change that later, right? So let's bring everything else back in again. Okay, let's just get a little bit more balance. Adjust the volume. I still feel like there's still some mud in those cymbals. Let's try to dig it out with this EQ down here. I'm gonna put this on so we can find the spot. It's, it's just below 600 hertz, I can hear it. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's that. Let's get rid of that. Again, we got to be careful because we take too much of that out. We're going to be sacrificing our kick and snare, which is what's really driving this track. So let's just uh, just 2 dB or so, 3 dB. Okay, so here's before. So it just feels a little bit wider, a little bit bigger, you know, more 3D. And that's all just a subtle lift on that top end and then clearing out some of the mud, right? And then a little bit of EQ to kind of glue everything together, make it a little bit exciting. And then that's what that, that little touch of saturation does to it too. Perfect. So at this point, we have the shells, we have the overheads. Let's just gently ride up the cymbals. We might not even have to do anything, okay? Um, let's just see what happens when we just take the fader and ride it up. Let's set this to infinity. I mean, it's so subtle, I can barely hear it. Let's see what's actually happening. I'm just gonna solo just the cymbals. Doesn't sound muddy to me when it's soloed. It didn't sound muddy when I raised the volume. Um, let's just make sure we can hear that stack, that this, um, this sound on the right side. So let me just uh, listen to the level when we have everything playing. We don't really need it that loud. It just adds a little bit of focus to the mix, okay? So I'm just gonna leave it like that and not mess with it. That sounds fine to me. Now let's ride up the hi-hats a little bit, okay? So let's find a spot where we can see if there's hi-hats and then just instead of trying to EQ and compress everything when we really don't know if we need it, you know, let's just take this fader up and see how it sounds. Let's bring it up. Yeah, I'm just going to crank this volume a little bit more just so we can really hear what's going on. If you notice, when we raise that fader up, it didn't sound bad, right? There was, it wasn't like, oh, it got muddy. Oh, the mix got cloudy. We lost clarity. We lost punch. It sounded fine, right? There's no reason to mess with it. I don't think we even need to do anything. I think we should just uh, add a little bit of focus on that part by just turning the volume up. Like right there and not even do anything with EQ or anything. So, so there we go. Uh, now we have the hi-hats, cymbals, overheads um, mixed along with the shells. So let's do uh, the rooms now, which is gonna be super fun because I love mangling room mics. So let's get uh, the EV2 channel strip on this. Let's see what we can do. Let's add some vibe, baby. This is where the fun part is. I'm gonna do 95 to one compression. I don't care. I'm just gonna be crazy over the top with this. Let's do fast attack. Oh, that's, see, this sounds insane, right? So here's the secret. With the room mics, you want to adjust the release so that the swelling and the breathing of these really, really compressed room mics is synced to the tempo of the song, okay? So let's bring in the bass or guitar or something, and let's try to adjust this release setting so that it's like breathing with the song, and that is where the magic is going to happen. 
All right, let me bring those guitars in. So this is, that's about right to me. Um, I wish it could be a little bit faster, but it's okay. It, it'll work out. Um, the volume that we're going to have for the room mics isn't going to be super loud. It's just going to be there to add this cool, dynamic, pumpy movement. Um, so let's, uh, let's keep playing this. Let's bring, our, let's bring all those cymbals in. Let's bring in our shells. Adjust the volume. Yes. If you want to get crazy with it, you can also distort it. Check this out. Got to turn the level down. You hear how like insane that sounds? So let's listen before and after, just just with the compression. Let's just I want you to hear what the compression does. And a little bit of that distortion. So this is without. Bypass. So it just sounds so aggressive. It sounds like the drummer is hitting everything so much harder. Which is what I love about mangling these room mics. All right. We got to clean up some of that low end. And this is where our filters are going to come and be our best friend, okay? So let's roll off everything under like 70, 80, maybe even higher uh, to clean up the rumble. We don't want any bass rumbling and swelling and doing stuff like that. That's a way to really screw up all of the punch of our kick drum and snare, okay? So the goal of the room mic is to make it literally sound like you're sitting outside of like a giant recording studio listening to a drummer hit drums super hard in a big room, okay? And right around 200 hertz was where it felt like I was sitting outside of a room. Okay? And we could do the same thing with this. This is a low pass filter. So this is gonna take off any extra high energy. Right, if you're listening to a drummer uh, in a different room, all that high energy is going to be absorbed by the walls and all that stuff, so there really shouldn't be a lot in there. So you want to roll this off. And some of them around there. That sounds about right. And then we can go in, uh, we'll play everything together, and then we can go in and really fine-tune where the muddy frequencies are and get rid of those, okay? So let's... Um, Let's bring everything back together, and then we'll adjust the level of this uh, room bus. So cool. So much vibe. Yeah. So, just saying right now, it doesn't sound like it really needs a lot, cut, okay? But let's put in the vocals, let's put in all this other stuff, because with everything in, it might be stepping on the toes of other instruments, okay? And we'll never know that unless those other instruments are in. Okay, so let's bring everything in and see what it sounds like. Here we go. I feel it, So right now, our drums are really loud. So because we bust them this way, we can just turn the volume down with this fader. Okay, 
Okay, it sounds like our snare and kick come up a little bit, so we have a shell bus. Bring this up a little bit. So I didn't hear the toms at all, so we gotta do something about those. We gotta bring that level up. Yeah, I didn't hear anything. Okay. Let's uh let's pull up this. Probably just need to ride that fader up. Now I will say the gain staging in this session, you you see me turning everything up to 12. That's not good practice. I'm just doing it out of convenience for this tutorial, okay? So I have plenty of videos on gain staging if you want to learn more about how digital gain staging works. Uh, so feel free to check out my channel or you can see this cool little card I have up here somewhere. And I'll teach you the nuances of digital gain staging. It's Pretty cool. Bring it in. Cool, so that's sounding good. I can see the light. So I'm feeling like we, I want a little bit more power and punch out of this snare drum. So let's give it a little bit of distortion. Let's just try that, right? Too much. Yeah. Cool. Now, I think we have a pretty solid mix. Let's see if we can find some mud in these rooms, because there's a lot of mid, low mids there. So what I'm going to do is play all the tracks together, and then we're going to just boost the crap out of this low mid band and see if there's a spot where it sounds like the room mics are getting in the way of the other instruments. So we're gonna pull frequencies out of that range. Okay, so let's let's do that. So I'm gonna make this really sharp cue so it can really get pointy, so we can really hear it in the mix. And then we'll find out where it's causing all the problems. And I'm gonna give it a little bit more volume too. So right here, right here, this is where it's getting in the way of the vocal, okay, right around 900 hertz. And then around, you know, uh, like 300, 200 hertz, it's starting to do this weird resonating thing and kind of mess up the guitars. So unfortunately, sorry if you're a guitar player, but we got to take care of our vocals first. So uh, let's cut here and see if we can clean up the, just carve a little bit more space for the vocal. And let's solo to see what it's actually doing. And actually, let's just roll this up a little bit more and see if that helps with the guitars. I think it does help a little bit. So let's leave it like right around here. And then let's get this volume set right because it's kind of crazy right now, right? We have it way too loud. Cool, all right, so just really quick, let's just drop the cymbals down a little bit. They're a little crazy. A little bit more on the rooms, and then in general, let's bring the drums back a touch. Okay, we can actually bring these cymbals up. I lied. Because it just gets such a nice sense of space, right? All right. 
Let's add EV2 to the drum bus, the main drum bus. And the reason I want to do this is it's sometimes nice to glue the cymbals to the, the actual shells. Okay. Uh, what I mean by that is when the drummer hits the snare, it'll kind of grab the cymbals and pull them in a little bit. And that's just like the physics of the way our ears work. If you have a really loud sound, fluid fills up our ears. And so it makes it hard to hear these like higher frequencies just for a fraction of a second. Okay. And so when you, when you glue the cymbals in the kick and snare together that way, it makes it sound like psychoacoustically in our minds that the drummer's hitting it even harder. Okay. And it also gives um, a little bit more space for the snare to develop its sound and differentiate it from just the cymbals constantly ringing. Okay. So let's be aware of the top again. Let's listen to what it's doing to the drums, and we're going to just fine tune um, our compression settings. So we'll probably want, again, we want it to like vibe with the beat of the song. So that was around point, you know, two five point three seconds. And again, we don't want to do too much compression, just enough to give it a little movement. So two and a half to one ish. I'm actually going to drop this back because I think I'm, I feel like I'm doing a little too, too much. Let's do a fast release and see if that does anything to the sound. So it actually makes it really fast and aggressive. I kind of like it more for this style of music. It makes the rooms sound wider. So I'm just going to leave it really fast like this. Okay. We need to turn down because, again, I'm a dummy and didn't gain stage properly. And then let's just add a little bit more air to the top end and just see what happens. I think it's going to just make it sound a little bit more modern. I feel like there's a nice snap here that helps to make it cut a little bit more, right? a little bit there if we start going around one and a half K it starts getting nasally you don't want that cool this sounds pretty good the only other thing I can think to try is what we can do is we can go back to our groups and then send a little bit of signal to this crush bus okay so I'm taking the shells and I like the shells to be pretty loud in that and let's send some symbols to the crush and put this to like minus six or something. We don't want those to get too crazy. Then we'll do the same with the rooms crush. And we'll do minus 12 for this. Nah, let's do minus six. Go big or go home, right? All right. On this crush bus, let's put one more instance of EV2. And we're going to do something just like we did with the rooms, but. We're going to do it on this bus independently. And then we're going to make this really crazy over the top gooey vibey drum thing. And then we can just take the fader and ride it in underneath our drums just to give it a little bit more energy and excitement. Okay. So let's start by just distorting it and compressing it really aggressively. Okay. Not, not like that. That's, that's too much. <laughs> All right, forget the distortion. That, I don't like what that's doing. Uh, let's try just compression. We'll do fast attack this time. We didn't like it before because it, it took all the punch away, but we don't, we're not using this for the punch. We're using this for the excitement, okay?
I just want to hear what it sounds like a little bit. Let's go crazy with this. All right, so this is without any of this crush bus. So you hear it just kind of fills it out, right? Out it. So we want to find the spot where we just start to hear it. And then you want to back it off a little bit, okay? Because otherwise, you know, when you first start to hear the sound of this crazy, pumpy crush bus, uh, it's usually too loud. And it's just because your mind didn't pick up on that difference in sound. So find the spot where you just start to notice it and then pull the fader back a little bit, you know, a few dB and just help tuck it underneath. It's like right here is a nice spot for this, okay? So I'm just gonna uh, mute it as I'm playing it so you can hear what it does to the mix. So it's subtle, but it, it just thickens out the drum sound just enough, okay? So at this point, I think we're probably good to Play everything together and see how our drums sound. Uh, let's just go for it. Yeah, sounding good. Let's hear how it sounds in this next part. So if this was me mixing this, I would actually automate in probably the rooms up a little bit and maybe the symbols here, just to give it a sense of space, a bigger sense of space for that verse. Let's bring those rooms up more. So our crush bus might be a touch loud. I think this is a probably a pretty good blend. Let's bring all those instruments back in and double check one last time. Let's listen to what it sounded like before any of those plugins. all the channel strips. This room bus is wild. <clears throat> Turn that down a tiny bit though. Man. And then without. Turn the volume up to match it. And with. The drums just come alive, right? All that. One plug-in, right? Channel strip. 
that EV is a great, great plugin. It is just so versatile. You have the distortion, you have a compressor, you have an expander or a gate, you have a bunch of really awesome EQ presets. I mean, what else could you need, right? So I hope this video showed you a good strategy for using a channel strip to mix an entire set of drums. You don't need to use three or four different types of compressors. You don't need specialty EQs. You literally can just use a single tool. And in this case, the Waves EV2 is pretty awesome. And so if you're in the market for a channel strip, I definitely would recommend checking out the Waves EV2 plugin. So how do you mix drums? Do you use a channel strip or do you use a channel strip in combination with a bunch of other plugins or do you just use other plugins? Let me know in the comments. I hope this video pulled back the curtain a little bit and showed you what it's like to work with a super dense mix in trying to get the drums to fit into it. You definitely need to balance a combination of mixing very quickly for limited time in solo just to make sure that you're getting the right tonal characteristics that you hear, but then referencing it to the entire mix because very quickly what you think might be a good decision might be causing problems in interfering with the different tonal ranges of the other instruments in the song. And as you practice more and more with mixing, all this will become second nature. You'll be able to fly through a session, dial in awesome sounding drums really fast. If you thought this video was helpful, it'd mean the world to me if you would share it with some friends on social media or just give this a thumbs up. I also wanna remind you that if you like this session and you wanna get your hands on these multi-tracks, or you're interested in that awesome free downloadable guide of my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins, you can go check out these links in the description. And with that, I wanna thank you so much for your time and attention today, and I hope to see you in another video. Favorite free mixing and mastering plugins. <coughs> They're really good. <laughs>